In essence, we understand the principles of heredity. Our DNA determines what we turn out like. Identical twins not only look alike, they even have the same nature because they share the same genetic makeup. And yet, in spite of the DNA, the older they get, the less like each other they become. There are even cases when one twin becomes very ill and the other stays healthy. How can that be? There is no doubt that we are more than the sum of our genes. Our DNA sequence alone does not determine our fate. This is where epigenetics come in. It studies how environmental influences regulate genetic activity and how acquired characteristics can partly be passed on. Thomas Jenuwein and his team at the Max Planck Institute of Immunobiology and Epigenetics in Freiburg want to know how it happens. The working group wants to find out how genes are regulated through the level of packaging. To do so, they are investigating chromatin, the complex of DNA and special proteins from which chromosomes are formed. Only when the DNA is loosely packed, for example, can the genes be read and translated into proteins. The scientists are investigating how the packaging grade of the DNA is regulated in the proteins of the chromatin through epigenetic, that means acquired, changes. A glimpse inside a cell. The DNA is a two meter long strand of genetic makeup that is found inside every cell. In order to fit, it has to be rolled up. It is wound around the packaging proteins, the histones, like a reel. They are always double, in the form of two identical molecules. May we introduce histones H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. The real and thread, or rather the globular protein and the DNA together, form the nucleosome. All nucleosomes together form the chromatin. Thomas Jenuwein is concentrating on H3, his personal packaging assistant, so to speak. He is trying to track down the way genes are regulated. And genes have to be read in order to become active. That can only happen when the chromatin is open. In other words, when the nucleosomes create space, as in a string of beads, to allow the DNA strand to be read. That is open chromatin, as we would find it in a stem cell, for instance. And then on the other hand, there is also densely packed chromatin, which is closed. So here we can see that the accessibility of the strand of the DNA is naturally very limited. Flashback to the 1990s. At that time, people already knew about a protein which regulates the color of the eyes of a fruit fly. The remarkable thing was, regardless of the color of the fruit fly's eyes, the gene locus which provided the code was identical. So there had to be a still unknown mechanism that produced these different characteristics. Thomas Jenuwein could not stop thinking about it. He investigated a corresponding protein in mice to find out about the process behind it. After five years of research, he had solved the riddle. An enzyme, or to be precise, a methyltransferase, changes the packaging density of the chromatin and hence the access to the DNA. In 2000, we succeeded in finding a methyltransferase, the first in the world. Now we know that there are more than 50 different ones. They do not methylate DNA, but histones, and thus the packaging degree of the chromatin, so that the chromatin closes and shuts off the genes. The methyltransferase attaches a methyl group to the histones, like a little Cupid who uses his bow and arrow to shoot the methyl group into the heart of the packaging protein H3. The H3 is ready to form a union and can now form a partnership with the right ladies, the HP1 proteins. They play an important part in epigenetic regulation. In this way, the chromatin can be more densely packed and the DNA at this point can no longer be read. 
Thomas Jenuwein is the man who discovered histone and methyltransferases. His work marks a milestone in epigenetics. But that was just the beginning. Scientists have already found two more methyltransferases. We can see how important these enzymes are if we look at the densely packed chromatin, the so-called heterochromatin, under the microscope. The scientists have marked it with a fluorescent dye so we can see it. Now it glows light blue and everything else remains invisible. The flecked pattern shows that various sections of the genetic material are present as heterochromatin. In between lie the less densely packed areas. However, when the scientists block the methyltransferase in the cell, the chromatin can no longer be densely packed and it disintegrates. By switching off specific methyltransferases, Thomas Jenuwein can determine whereabouts on the chromatins the methyl remnants will become attached. That affects the degree of the packaging. The chromatin will only be densely packaged if all three methyltransferases work correctly. Of course, the methyltransferases need methyl groups, and they are supplied, amongst other things, in our food. A banana, for example, contains many methyl groups. Our food, therefore, influences not only our metabolism, but also the regulation of our genes. This can be seen, for example, in agouti mice. Mutations can lead to an increased expression of the agouti gene. The mouse may have yellow fur and suffer from fatty degeneration and diabetes. If we give pregnant agouti mice different food, with either fewer methyl groups or extra methyl groups, the baby mice will develop differently. The baby mice, which only received a small number of methyl groups via their mother's food, will become yellow, sick and fat. The other baby mice, on the other hand, will have brown fur and will remain slim and healthy. The methylation can switch off the agouti gene again. In animal models, some of these characteristics can also be passed down to the next generations. So, in short, it is certainly important what I eat and how healthy my lifestyle is. It even affects the life of my children and grandchildren. Thank you.